Broadcasting live from the Vegas Video Network studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's Talk Tales! And now our host, she's our very own kaleidoscope of talent! What? It's Kelly Clinton! studio audience stop with the love welcome to the vegas video network uh you are watching talk tales and i am your host kelly clinton hyphen homes ah and you know what i i don't know why i brought this today but it's been in my closet for for like two years and and i got it in new york and my husband bought it for me from armani so just to justify the purchase <laughs> ah, i just bought it to make the show more special Okay, now that that's out of the way, I will tell you that our guest today is, is a friend of mine who I've known for quite a few years, but doing my research, I have to say, I learned a lot more about him. He is a multi-talented singer, actor, musician, performer, does several different characters. My favorite one is the one of himself. Bobby Brooks Wilson is here today. Entertainer. Entertainer extraordinaire. He's fabulous. And, and wait till you see him. He looks hot. He's a showstopper today. Now, um, sadly, uh, our, our, our Talk Tales Orchestra, Kenny Davidson, is not with us today. <laughs> um, I don't know how to say this, but this is what happened to Kenny. He got a gig this afternoon. <laughs> so he'll be back next time. But we have to fill in for him is, is a gentleman who, who did this once before. He's a, a musical director. Some other stuff. He's a, he creates shows. He's, he's, a, he's a great singer. He started a group called uh, the, the Las Vegas Tenors. And then another group called... Voices Three. Voices Three. Voce was, Vegas. Huh? Voce Vegas. Oh, I just heard my thoughts. Voce <laughs> Vegas. He is unbelievable. He worked with my husband for 35 years. They're best friends. Please welcome our orchestra for today. The Talk Tales Orchestra is Bill Fain. <laughs> Welcome back, Billy. Thank you for being here Thanks. for us. Oh, it's fun. Do you don't have you, you don't have a bow tie. What? I know. I don't have a bow tie or Botox. Oh, well, I wish I could say the same, but anyway. Um, uh, by the way, it does wear off. Um, listen, I know you have something coming up. You're working with, uh, with uh, I'm working with, talented with, people. With Tara Palsha and Ann uh, Barr Martinez and uh, Eiler Evan and George DeMott and... We're doing a show uh, at the Onyx Theater, March 10th. Love the Onyx Theater. And it's Theater. called A Love Story. And it's a show that I kind of put together with, with uh, about love, falling in love, falling out of love, uh, all, all the, the aspects of love. I'm so impressed with you. You're always doing something new and creating something new, and you get the best. These people are extremely talented. Well, if I wasn't doing these things, I would just be home drinking Honey Jack. Whoa, you know what? You're in luck today. We've got some Honey Jack for you. So thanks for being here, Bill Fain. Pleasure. I also want to say hello to Honey Jack, uh, because he is, after all, the one who started the Vegas Video Network and created this beautiful, wonderful fantasy land for all of us. Say hello to Scott Whitney, our director, producer. Hello, Kelly. Uh, you know, um, you really are having some drinks tonight on... Talk I will not tales. be talked to in that manner. I was, I don't know if you're misreading, mishearing me, but I was just saying hello you. and acknowledging that you like the cocktails. Hello? Is this thing on? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's not true. You've been pushing the honey jack, which you know what? It's, it's absolutely delicious. I'm and I, it. I can't drink it, otherwise they'll put me back in that place. <laughs> Which place is that? Never Kelly. mind. It's okay. I have to be back by 7 p.m. But listen, <laughs> hey, Scott, how are you? I'm good. What, what have you been up to since the last time we talked, Kelly? Well, let me tell you. 
I just did a gig. It was probably like 12 hours long. Bobby probably knows what I'm talking about, even though he's in the big time now in the big showrooms with the CDs and everything. Um, I did a show at the Bellagio. Oh, I saw that on the Facebook. Oh, did you see that I was on the Facebook? I going to ask you about that. What was that? Well, you know what it is? My, I have a production company. It's called Kelly Clinton Productions. What? That's LLC. Clever. Yes. That's how I remember what it's called. Anyway. <laughs> so sometimes I book other people, you know, to perform three-piece groups or a big band or, you know, uh, d different characters. Um, but often the Kelly Clinton band is uh, performs at corporate events. Oh. This one was at the Bellagio, and it was a Mardi Gras theme. Oh, so I got the best musicians, musicians in town and the best singers, and we worked our little tushies off. Did anybody Do, uh, lift their top? You know what? <laughs> Nobody lifted their top because you know who, you know who we're, we're performing <laughs> for um, is for the high rollers. It's a, it's a slot tournament. Have you ever been to one of those, Scott? Do uh, you want the truth on that? I really want the truth. Oh, I, uh, I played a gig at the mansion. Do you know what that is? Uh, the Playboy Mansion? Nope. Uh, nope. at, M at MGM, they have a high roller place called The Mansion. Okay. And uh, I played a solo guitar gig for a Baccarat tournament. Oh, I thought you meant Bert Baccarat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, maybe it was Bert. I, I so, so what was that like for you? Was it a it good was, experience? It was a, well, it's a lovely gig. It's a nice place. I just, I just, just hung out you? by the pool and just played. And, you know, well, people ignored cool me and they paid me a lot of money. Did you good. sing or did you just play? <laughs> did you sing or did you play? Hello? I just played guitar. All right, well, let me tell you, we, we pulled out some New Orleans charts. I borrowed some charts from my best friend, who is Lena Prima. Yep. And right. Lena is the daughter of the late and great Louis Prima. She lives in New Orleans now. She, uh, she lived there when we were kids, too, and she moved to Vegas. And anyway, so she's got these great charts. Can you play a little bit of that one? That she lent me a chart by a lady named Irma, a song fa made famous by Irma Thomas. And I thought this was a cool song, but just, if my husband is watching, Clint, this is not about you. Well, you can help my husband, but please don't mess with my man. What? <laughs> Said you can help my husband, but please don't mess with my man. Listen, girls, I'm telling all you women now, I want you all to understand. Check this out. Said when I was with my husband, he was really mean. But now I'm with my man and it treats me like a queen. You can have my husband, but please don't mess with my man. I'm telling all you women now, I want you all to understand. Let's do another breakdown. Uh, the money my husband made was for red beans and rice. My man keeps me in steaks, now ain't that nice? You can't have my husband, but please don't mess with my man. I'm telling all you women now, I want you all to understand. Wow, 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 wow. This is where I play my trumpet. Wow! much Hi. i don't get no, to baby. sing very often on the show but anyway i have one more part of the story scott okay just, just so you know clint logged off <laughs> <laughs> i was acting i'm a thespian if you know what i'm saying you're what and i know what i don't know what motorboating is but that's another story anyway that's another show or two listen i am going first of all tonight clint is getting an award in new york so i'll be there right by his side <laughs> but anyway, you'll understand that later. Um, uh, he's getting an award, a, a bistro award in New York, uh, because his show, the Paul Simon Cole Porter, This Thing Called mm. Love, yeah. was just a smash hit. And that's a huge honor. So congratulations, Clint Holmes. I will be there with you. <laughs> but right after that, he's coming back to the Smith Center to do the uh, ninth, ten, eighth, ninth, tenth at the Smith Center, brand new show. You're going to love it. Uh, and I'll be back for the Sunday, but you know where I'll be? Where? Wait, I'm going to New Orleans. What? I've never been to New Orleans. Have you, Scott? <laughs> All right. Now, yep. after this commercial break, no. <laughs> have you been? Yes, I have. 
And are you got any crawfish well, stories? Really talk or any, about it. No jumbo. <laughs> oh, you mean the woo boo? <laughs> Well, Some of no, this I just, stuff went I, on. I, I don't need to talk about that. All right. So, yeah, it, was they, really good, it was a good time. It was a good we time. Okay. Mardi Gras. Is was, that where you met beautiful Melissa? No. no, no, no. <laughs> this, was, this, was, this was BM before Melissa. You know what? You might need to think that one through a little bit. That, <laughs> yeah, well, we don't want to say that yes, on her. Scott. Anyway, she's lovely, and she loves you no matter what happened in New Orleans. That's true. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to go. I'm going to join Lena. She's doing something called the Prima Fest. And, oh. and I'm going to get to sing with her a little. And, and thank you, Lena, if you're watching. I hope you are, because you are my best friend. And that would be great if you watch the show I'm on. <laughs> anyway, thanks for lending us all the charts and all the people in the band and all the singers were great. And thank you to the Bellagio. Now, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to, you're going to meet one of the most dynamic performers in the world. He's uh, just in town for a little while. He's getting ready to take off again. He's got a brand new CD out. You're going to meet Bobby Brooks Wilson on Talk Tales right after this. This is David Ivey for Pub Crawl. Funny because this is David. From, you should, you should, no, you should just leave it on. Hi, I'm David Ivy from Pub Crawl, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. And scene. Traditional media believes that after about three minutes, you'll tune out. Most Vegas media companies think if it doesn't jiggle, you won't tune in. At the Vegas Video Network, we think both are wrong. The Vegas Video Network is the first and only live online broadcast network that specializes in insider news and expert views about Vegas. We combine great storytelling with the ability to watch when and where you want on your computer, mobile device, or television. Discover the real Las Vegas. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com. Welcome back to Talk Tales. I am your host, Kelly Clinton hyphen Holmes. And I'm so excited because my friend is here. He's traveling the world. He's got a brand new CD out called It's About Time. And it's about time we've had him on the show. Please welcome my friend, Bobby Brooks Wilson. Yeah, baby. Thank you. Bobby, <laughs> boy, you look sharp. Thank Mr. you. So, so do you. So you do look you. good. You always look good. I try. I try hard. Thank you. You, you kind of got that old school. I like kinda, old school. Yeah, like yeah. You, you dress up. You go to, you go to, you're, you're going to the party and you're going to be, <laughs> you're not going to blend into the wall. You look so great. I know Thank you're you. touring. Yep. Uh, 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 you just came off. Did, did you just come back off be on a cruise? Um, uh, no, a short a tour in Phoenix, uh, the different uh, communities in Phoenix. And uh, what were you doing? Were you doing, I doing the, my two hour show? Um, uh, I, uh, basically, a show about my life, uh -huh. but using the Motown years. Okay, do you do some of your impressions in the show? Of course. If we do, uh, you know, we got Little Richard, Stevie Wonder, um, Nat King Cole, Johnny Mathis, you know, just to name a few. You're so, you're so talented. <laughs> it's fun. Now, um, for years, I called you. Bobby Brooks, right. right? I mean, I've known you for I don't know how many years. A long time. A long time, and yeah, we've, we've about, worked together a little bit. About seven years. And, and, then, and then everyone always said to you, you look like Jackie Wilson. Right. And, and you liked that a lot, yeah. but then we found out that there was more to it. Can you tell us about your history with Jackie Wilson? Well, this, um, I've known for a long time. I came here to Vegas in 99, mm -hmm. and so I think that I met you then. But no, it's, uh, you know, I knew that my mother and he, he was friends, uh, were together. Uh -huh. And um, I was, uh, you know, I was raised in the foster home, so I wasn't raised with my m maternal parents. Right. And so uh, it's sort of something I knew for a long time, but never really uh, did anything about it. And it wasn't until the family kind of came after me. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, got together and figured it all out. So why do you think uh, having that information all that time that you didn't want to really pursue finding it, out more about it. It, did, it wasn't, to be honest, it really wasn't that important to me. And mm -hmm. since my mother at the time didn't confirm it, right? It, was, it didn't mean nothing to me. It, right. it really, it just didn't really mean anything. But like I said, um, once I started working for Legends in Concert, right? That's when it, it mushroomed, and the family came out of the woodwork. And then uh, next thing you know, 
they knew my mother and right. A plus B was C, you know. So, so they you, they came out because they had they didn't know. Where they want to know who this guy was. They didn't really was. know yeah. about you. Yeah. yeah. So they came out. Were you doing Jackie a tribute to Jackie Wilson in, in, in the, the Legend Show? In Atlantic show? City, yeah, I was in Atlantic City at Ballast Park Place when uh, the Four Tops were actually playing there, uh -huh. and um, Levi Stubbs and uh, Peyton uh, Lawrence Peyton uh, snuck down to see see my show because the. Uh, the entertainment director at the time told him, oh, we got a Jackie Wilson. They went, Jackie Wilson? Yeah. Well, uh, Levi Stubbs is Jackie's first cousin. Oh. Uh, and uh, Lawrence Payton is his, one of his cousins. So they're all family. So they wanted to see who this guy was. And when I came down, they were astounded. And uh, they said that uh, I was more than just an impersonation. They thought. They just knew it. They, they said it's too much. And so they had me come up and meet him in the green room. Okay. And that was back in 97. And so I walked up to the, the green room to meet him and... Uh, Wait, first of all, these yeah. are a couple of your heroes, probably, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Growing up in the music <laughs> no, that no, you no, love I was, and I was trembling. You know, to meet the four times, I was like, I was out of my mind. Wow. And so when I walked up there and I met, uh, Lawrence Payton was the first one to, to, to greet me. Uh, he, he just kept looking at me and shaking his head and saying, he says, what you don't know is you act like him. He says, okay. that you don't know. He says, he says, you don't know him, do him. I said, no, I... I I said, somebody told me I looked like Jackie Wilson when I was in Hawaii, right. and, I start, and I, I put a tri tribute to him. Right. You and said, then, thank you very much, yeah. <laughs> and I'll do some of these songs. Yeah, and, and so, um, and, and I did, and, and uh, Paul Revere is the one, Paul Revere of the Raiders. You know what, I yeah. know Paul, I mean, everybody probably knows who Paul Revere and the Raiders yes, are, yes, but Paul Revere. I worked with them up in Reno and Tahoe, so, yeah. so they, how are they involved in the story? Paul Revere was owner of the Legends and Concert Show in oh, Hawaii. I didn't know that. Yeah, so when he came to Hawaii, I'm gonna back up a little bit more. When he came to Hawaii, I was working for a show called The Love Notes, the very first show. The Love Notes was a doo-wop show uh, okay. in uh, the Waikiki Sheraton. Six, seven guys, seven girls, and a little kid named Bruno who was baby Elvis in the show. He was six years old. He had then, uh, co by the time I joined the group, he had already co-starred with Nicolas Cage in, uh, Honeymoon in Las Vegas. Ah, okay. And uh, so little Bruno was the star, basically the star of the show, but uh, his mother and father are, are the ones that hired me. My very mm -hmm. first professional job. Okay. And, and I learned everything about the music business. And they, Paul Revere and John Stewart came in to see Bruno. Now John Stewart is who John I always Stewart is the, connect is, to the legends Yeah, well, they were partners concert. in that show. Okay. Yeah, so John Stewart and, and, uh, and uh, the, they came in to see Bruno and they, they, and they did love Bruno, but uh, Paul Revere was blown away about me. Right. So he says, hey, I work with this guy. You know who Jackie Wilson is? So I know, I said, I know of him, but I've never seen him. I don't know what he right. looked like. And he pulled me by my ear and showed me a, his album cover, uh, Billy Ward and the Dominoes. Right. And that's the first time I saw anybody you, that looked like me. You had never seen a picture of Jackie oh. Wilson. So you, you had the information, <laughs> but it was a name to you. It, it was wasn't a name. Yeah, I knew the, the songs. And, it, and his name. The amazing performer yeah. that we all know is Jack I, I didn't know anything about him. And my, in my foster home, my oldest sister uh, used to play all his records. So mm -hmm. I knew his music. She played all the records from right. the 60s. So I knew his and music. And you were a fan, but you didn't know that. Yeah, so. well, yeah, sort of. I was sort, sort of a fan. You know, I didn't know who he was. I knew right. higher and higher. That was it. Right. <laughs> and I knew That's the, one of the Okay, yeah. now, so you look at this album and you thought, is this was, a mirror or I was is blown this away. an album? Yeah, because it looked like my high school picture. Wow. Yeah, so I was blown away. And then, uh, uh, and then Paul Revere says, you got to do Jackie for our show. And I, six months later, I auditioned for him, got hired on the spot. And then th four years later, that's, that's when, the, when you met these the Wilson family started coming out of people. Woodward. Okay. And the, the one that was most instrumental was Billy Roquel Davis. He became my mentor. He wrote all the songs for Jackie, even though Barry Gordy gets a lot of the credit. It was, right. it was really Billy and Barry working together that wrote all of Jackie Wilson's uh -huh. hits. And he took me to dinner. Uh, he came down and took me to dinner and said, hey, you know, I wanna, let's talk, you know. Because he says, I really want to get to know who you are. He thought I was a nice guy. And he took me to meet Aretha Franklin. Uh, what are these <laughs> stories you're telling me? I don't know any of this yeah, about we, you. Yeah, he took me to meet Aretha Franklin uh, on, on my day off. And he, he and Aretha are uh, dated when they were younger. Okay. And, and they tried to get Aretha on Motown's label, but her father wouldn't let her right. when she was 16. Right, because, because, uh, because, because of the father, church and the... the church, yes, and right. she played piano for the church. But they dated, and he wrote a lot of songs for everybody you can think of. The man was such a humble man, and he wrote songs for everybody you can think of. And he's the one...
that really put me with the family and called everybody. And, and then once he told me, he asked me, who you, who's your mother? And I told him who my mother was. I only knew my mother from my birth certificate. Okay. He knew my mother. He knew exactly and he who says, she oh, was. He says, oh, she's from Brooklyn, Casey, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah. And he says, yeah, I know your mother. So that's really, is <laughs> yeah. that really when you, yeah, when that's, they confirmed that's, that that's. They confirmed and then I talked to my mom and she kind of, she knew them. So that was that. And you then, spoke to your mom too? Yeah, I, I would okay. see her from time to time. Okay. Like every two to five years. So that must have been an, yeah. an amazing and emotional time was, for you. I mean. It was, I, it was a time where I actually went completely away from it and started selling Kirby vacuum cleaners. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know what? We have one of them right here. Hey, Kirby's no. the best. <laughs> Did you really sell vacuum? Yeah, for a year and a half. I just quit the business altogether. Because of this emotional situation? Why? Uh, why, why? Uh, that had a part to do with it, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I knew I didn't want it to be considered impersonated anymore. Right. And I wasn't, get, I wasn't getting younger. I was getting older. So okay. That happens so much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it totally happens to us. Yeah, so, um, so I, I went so away you for went, a while. Did, so were you I a good vacuum back. salesman? I was great. I put on the show, hey! You know? <laughs> I feel hey, good. Here you go. <laughs> We're going to clean that dirt and I'm going to sing a song for you. Woo! You know. <laughs> it's fun. It and uh, I became the number one salesman in Hawaii. Well, that's and very impressive. It was funny. It was funny. And then uh, I got slammed back into the business. Kind of a crazy story. Okay. B Bruno Mars. Oh, the, the kid was Bruno Mars. So the Mars. little Elvis impersonator. It, it turns out to be Bruno Mars, the pop star. So this was here in Vegas and that's... Did no, he, did this he was live in Hawaii. This is in Hawaii? Hawaii? Okay. Yeah. All right. I As, thought he lived here. No, Bruno lives in, okay. he lives in L.A. now, but uh, no, it, this was all in uh, Hawaii. Okay. But anyway, so at 16 or 17, um, this big icon on Hawaii uh, calls me. He's a producer, in many, and he produces many different things. But uh -huh. he called me on my phone, which I don't even know how he got it. He goes, uh, meet, and he's a big Hawaiian accent. Uh -huh. Hey, bro, this is, uh, you know who this is. I was like, who's this? You know who this is. I'm like, okay. Uh, I need you to bring your video down to my office, and then I need you to go and start rehearsals tomorrow at the uh, Beach Coma. I'm like, I'm not in show business. He goes, yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> that was the end of Isn't that. Isn't that amazing? I mean, <laughs> I mean that, and you said, okay. Yeah, that's and you just, that. you parked like, that vacuum, and you, <laughs> yeah. got, and you went over there. Yeah. But see, that's, that's a, it's, it's one of those stories where you're just meant to, to do what you do. Well, yeah. And, and I, I embraced it. You can it. run, yeah, but you I'm, can't hide. When I embraced Bobby it, Brooks, that's when everything opened up. Wilson. And thank you. Thank so you. what was that show? What was that? It was, uh, it's called Aloha Las Vegas, kind of fitting, because uh -huh. I, was, I didn't know I was going to be leaving Hawaii. And it was an impersonator show. I opened the show as uh, Jackie Rosen and then later Stevie Wonder. And I also emceed the show. Then wow. Bruno came out and he did Elvis and Michael Jackson. Uh. And his mother did Tina Turner. That's the show. Wow, so it was That's just the, whole show. the three of Me, you. Me, Bruno, and his mom, and then eight dancers. Not too many people can d do what you did, fun. split personality. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't know who I was. Sybil. I wake up sometimes, don't know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you did this show. Yeah, you know what? Like that happens to me as well. <laughs> I totally relate to you. <laughs> but like a year and a half, and then that's when I decided uh, I wanted to come to Vegas and explore my options. Well, I know you as the, an amazing performer who just, you're just passionate about it. Mm -hmm. You'll come to a gig that I'm at or something, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll think, well, let me just ask him. You feel like, and he's like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he just actually grabs the mic out of my hand and goes. And you get the people every time. It's so fun. It's fun. It's something I love to do. It's, it's a passion. And I know you as that physical guy. You mm -hmm. dance, mm -hmm. you sing, you joke, you yell at him, you break yeah. into impressions. Right. But when I read uh, your bio, mm -hmm. I, I learned that you ha didn't, it wasn't so easy. You, you grew up in foster homes. Mm -hmm. But, but not, that wasn't, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your health. You had some mm -hmm. major health issues as a young person. Yeah. I mean, a young boy. Yeah, yeah. I, um, it w I was projected actually not to, to live long because I, I was under underdeveloped intestine system, underdeveloped lungs. And I, 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 when I try to put it together, I think my mother may have not known she was pregnant and, and when she had me. And mm -hmm. I was born in Westbury, Long Island, New York, which I didn't find out to... 10 years ago, wow! I thought I was born in Columbia, South Carolina, where I was raised, but she actually had me in a house with a midwife. Okay. And then she traveled to South Carolina, which was her home, and gave me up, and then went back to New York. Okay. So uh, uh, it's, it's a lot of, the, I'm still putting together bits and pieces of my life, early life. But I, I, I remember as a child, 
going through the, going in and out of the hospital and my mother who raised me who's 94 uh, praying over me every night uh -huh. and she prayed she's a hard praying woman she would have a fist and she would be pounding my stomach and I'm like please stop this crazy lady from praying over me yeah. <laughs> wow because she was pounding my stomach crying because she wanted me to survive oh. and so uh, so I remember the many nights of her praying. How, how old were you the, for the, well, this memory? Probably between, that you between had. six and nine. I would okay. picture Forrest Gump, the movie Forrest Gump, with the braces all the way down. I wore those wow. until I was, I don't know, 11 or 12. And, and, and then Navy, I joined the Navy, of course. And then the Wait Navy, a minute, you're skipping a whole bunch yeah, of stuff. Yeah, right I gotta there. tell you this, this is funny. Because okay. I wore those braces for two years yeah. or three years, they had to break my legs because I had rickets at the bones. So they broke my legs to make them straight. When I, when I, came, when I was uh, about six, my legs were like this and my feet were pointing in. So they broke it to make my legs straight and then I wore the cast for two years and, and uh, three, I don't know cast? how long. Cast? Like a I wore full, a full, oh. wore a full body cast for a while and then I wore <sighs> the weighted shoes. And the, so when I saw the movie Forrest Gump, that was me. Yeah. And, and I was fighting kids with those bracelets on. <laughs> 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 because that's you know, amazing. because kids are bullies, you know. Oh and, yeah. And, and especially the school I went to, and that's a whole nother book by itself. And so, <laughs> you know, because I deal with the black on black oh, okay. issues. You mean I was too light? Right? Oh, okay. I was too white, and so as far as they concerned, I wasn't full black. Okay. So I had to deal with those issues growing up. So you weren't in a biracial <laughs> no, school. No, you I were, was in 100% just... black school, but the kids didn't think I was black enough. And they didn't even give you a break because all that other stuff nah, was going No, they didn't care. Wow. <laughs> you know, so you, so but, when are you going to write the book? Um, oh, we're in the middle of writing it right now. Is it going to be called, it's about time? I don't know what it's going to be called right now. Right now I'm just uh, recalling a lot of, um, of, of events that happened in my life, which I, I'm finding out that it is it's, uh, sort of cleaning me out. I'm, I'm digging out healing, stuff that right? I had buried that I didn't know wow. was buried. Uh, um, memories and issues. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, a work to be continued, you know. So, so you're working progress. with someone. I'm working with uh, publishers and, okay. and, and, and my manager, uh, uh, Tony Mantor. And so we're just going to get it all out and, uh, you know. It's a fascinating got a lot story. Of, a lot of goals, so. It, it's, it's, wait, 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 wait. Okay. I've got the, oh, Navy, the Navy story. You so just because don't, of the you braces, don't have enough to say. <laughs> yeah, because of the braces, when I joined the Navy, you know, we, I'm in a, taking a shower, and, I'm, you know, you got 80 guys in one room. Right. I walk out with these, the Navy towel's about this big. Mm -hmm. That's a Navy towel. Really? Yeah, that's a Navy towel. So I got this towel around me, and I have no hair on my legs because of the cast. So no hair's ever grown on my legs. So these guys are looking oh. at me like I'm some little girl. They're going, whoo! Oh, boy. <laughs> and it never I, ends. And I start praying. <laughs> yeah, then you start pounding, pounding on your own chest, going, because please I'm, let my hair grow I'm back gonna, on my leg. No, they never, it never grown. It never, oh. No, no hair's ever grown on my leg. But the guys were like, oh, he's in there shaving. Oh. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not shaving. And I was like, yes, you are. You know, the, boy. It, it was crazy. And this I, is definitely a book. <laughs> it's crazy. This, this might be two books. <laughs> this might be two books. It, it, it's, it's, it's fun. It's I hate fun. to bring this up right now when you just said that story, but haven't I seen you in a dress? I don't know what you're talking about, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Was there perhaps a Tina Turner, Tina Turner impression no, in your show? No, no, no. I then was. Why no. have I seen you in a dress? Because of Faison, the comedian. Well, that explains it. What? <laughs> what? Faison had he a, made a you pilot. do it? No, he had a pilot show. Okay. And the producers of the show, okay, I did a couple of shows. I did the Las Vegas show okay. at Shelby Checker. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. And, so, uh, and, um, and the producers from that show remembered me and wanted me to come do this pilot with Faison. It was like three years oh, ago. Oh, there we go. You're, oh! <laughs> yeah, baby. Who the hell is that? Let's give it up for the team, Jacob. Oh, <laughs> Scott, Tara, thank you. Man, the things they yes. find on the internet, huh? Yeah, I see. Now, I didn't know. I thought maybe you didn't have no, that out there. No, anymore. I was doing a, a they, and the, they, the agent, the, the film agent. He's, he's like all nervous right now. She wouldn't let he's me like, go. Rabbit, rabbit, she rabbit. goes, you got to do this. They, the, the producers are calling me. They want you. I said, And I told her, I said, out of all the drag queens that are yeah. in Vegas, what do you mean me? Why me? And she goes, no, they want you. They want you to play the scene where we're fighting over a dress. <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. So and I was trying to keep Little Richard out of the character. Because <laughs> I was going to Little Richard, and he's like, uh, the director, like, cut. That's Little Richard, isn't it? And oh. Like, uh, <laughs> he so he says, no, we don't want Little Richard. We want you as a drag queen. I'm like, 
Oh, great. Hi, what? It's just what... Well, they, they just know you can do it. They know what they it. want it, yeah. And so. they know you can do yeah, it, because you're a great actor. And it actor. paid went very well. And so. it, you know what? I would <laughs> I'd wear a dress, too. What? <laughs> it paid very well. Yeah, that's always, the, I know, right? <laughs> All of us, we love it, we'll do well, it. Well, you know, I said no, 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 until she told me what I was going to pay. Exactly. She, I said, oh, I can't do that. No, 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 wait, what? When you want me to wear it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that today? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I can be there in three minutes. I can be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we first, well, one of the things we've done together were, was the Elvis, Elvis Choir. Elvis, oh my God. So Don't I'm female Elvis, and, and you are not female Elvis. No, I wasn't a female Elvis. I was the brother Elvis. You were brother Elvis. Brother Elvis, yeah. Thank and you very much. Thank you, honey. How, how you doing? I don't mean, know. Where's, where's, where's the cornbread and chitlins, honey? I need mean, the cornbread and chitlins. Thank you very much. Well, we we do something called the Elvis Choir. Boy, you got yeah, those, you funny. got you got more lip than the lip. <laughs> but we did the Elvis Choir, and there's that there's was fun. How many? Ten people in the yeah, choir. Yeah, about ten people. Maria Battaglia. Yeah, yeah, right? Maria's great. Um, and the agency. Yeah, uh, always entertaining. Always entertaining. Yeah, and yeah. she put together. There you are. There you are. <laughs> oh man, I wish we had a shot of my Elvis suit. But anyway, so we've done that. We've gigged together on that. So right. you, you can do anything. I'll do anything. They want. But you know, also that show, uh, I had a, show, a gig that come up through Maria where they uh -huh. wanted me to uh, escort uh, Whoopi Goldberg in an Elvis outfit for the comedy relief thing they were doing. Oh, yeah, comic relief. Comic yes, relief, yes. yeah, comic relief. Uh, this was a few years ago, and I'm, I'm wearing that jumpsuit, and I'm escorting her out on stage. And she goes, oh, you show a pretty man. <laughs> and I went, so are you. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. That's what you I did. did. Did she, and she laugh? Goes, oh, funny, funny. Oh. You're funny. Oh, you're funny, funny. And like that. You, you got away with that. Yeah, you, I did. Yeah, you, yeah. Oh, look, oh, look, look, there she is. <laughs> where did that come in. from? I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but now, that's my cheesy jumpsuit. I have a, I have a really cool one, too. Mm -hmm. But you, you really take your characters, you, you really go all out. Oh, yeah. You, you get in the character as an actor, but you also go all the way with the costuming, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Like your Elvis suit. Yeah. That's probably modeled after no, I bought, one of I bought the Elvis suits. You know, the, the, huh? the guy that actually made the Elvis suits. Uh, it's two two companies. You mean Elvis? You mean the guy who actually made Elvis's? Suits? Yeah, yeah. It's a two wow. companies. F and D, which is one company, and then another a guy uh, uh, out of uh, of L. A. and one out of uh, Memphis. That's a serious investment. Yeah, yeah, there. and yeah. Because you know how much the, they cost. Is, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I kind of know. Yeah, and I have a couple of suits. Just uh, Maria's given me a lot of El brother always Elvis gifts. Always entertaining. Yeah, always entertaining. But uh, she gave me a couple of brother Elvis gifts. I mean, they wanted a black Elvis. Right. And they didn't want just a clown. They wanted a good looking guy right. to play Elvis. So I had a couple of good gigs from her. Yeah. I keep the jumpsuit ready. Oh, jumpsuit absolutely. Jumpsuit ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> now, some of the... <laughs> He's making some good money. I got to work on my characters. <laughs> now, you... Some of the other characters. I brought it up earlier. Uh, little, but... little Richard. Uh, woo! -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Um, got any little Richard? Um, we got, uh, <laughs> shut up, baby. <laughs> 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 Who let him play in anyway? <laughs> you know I play my own piano. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I glossing, baby? Is I'm a shining? By the way, can we get a round of applause for Bobby's hair? <laughs> that, that is awesome. Oh, thank you. You need a show called Bobby's Hair. I know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just doing the I, countdown. How long will it last? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. It's awesome. Also, you do Stevie Wonder. Stevie you Wonder. Do, uh, um, uh, Little Richard. Little Richard, Stevie Wonder, Johnny Mathis, Young Ray, Young Ray Charles. Young Ray Charles. Um, um, Nat King Cole, and, uh, and, and every now and then Elvis, of course. Okay, now. Yeah. Uh, and then a lot more voices. He's he's amazing, and I love you just singing as you too. And yeah. that's that is that what we're hearing that's here. That's right. On this CD called "It's About Time." It's about time. Plateau Music, a uh, uh, producer out of uh, uh, out of uh, Nashville, got a hold of me. He saw my story. He said he'd been following me for a few years, and wanted to know have I under, ever done a national product like this, and I hadn't. Mm -hmm. And what we did was got together and we did six of my, my father's songs, which I did in my style. I didn't try to copy him. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do it in my way. And then we did six originals. And uh, they really came out good. We got about six different reviews from around the world, from Germany, from the UK. I got interviewed by Susie Quadro from uh -huh. the BBC. Wow. And, uh, and it's, uh, we still uh, doesn't, we won't have the CD release party to June the 1st, which is the week 
when my father was born. Okay, here in Las Vegas? No, the CD yeah. release party would be in uh, Motown. We are oh, doing it wow. in Motown, and uh, it, uh, some of the stars are, are going to be there. I'm not allowed to say who yet. But oh, that's Some that's, of the Motown stars, which is kind of cool. Yeah, but we got great endorsements. Um, Barry Gordy put my first review on his website. Wow. Um, Barry Gordy, How Motown cool CEO, yeah. And uh, just, it's just, uh, it's really taken off. You know? So you've really, uh, like, you, there's no way you can be a vacuum salesman. <laughs> you were born to do this, as I said earlier, yeah. and, and I'm a big fan, and I can't wait to hear the CD. Will you do one of the songs? Or? Yes, I'll do a, a song. We, we can have some, we can do it right now with the maestro. Ah. <clears throat> Let's see if I can sit up. Yeah, right. you can <laughs> sit up a little bit. Except your hair, you gotta watch. I know. <laughs> The version of this song is my dad's song from 1967. See if you remember this. Your love's lifting me higher than I ever been lifted before. So keep it up, quenching my desire, and I'll be at your side forevermore. You know your love keeps lifting keep on lifting. Disappointment was my call a friend But then you came in a soon party You know I never show this face again You know your love, it keeps on lifting Thank you, sweetheart. I love you. Thank, Thank you. you for doing this. I appreciate and, it. And, and uh, good luck with your CD. Oh, thanks. And much success. Thank we you. can get on iTunes or anywhere. You we can go want. to iTunes and go to the website, BobbyBrooksWilson.com. Also, PlateauMusic.com and Amazon.com. Soon to be everywhere. Ah, <laughs> your love keeps lifting. Keep on 